Josh, I've heard Call of Duty Warzone's on fire. Oh, my friend, it really, <laughs> really is. And it sucks because Call of Duty Warzone has been in a really pretty good state for the past few months. Mm. You know, Raven Software, with the release of Modern Warfare 3, made a bunch of changes to the core gameplay and the game feel. They introduced a new map called Urzikstan, which is really, really nice. They've increased the pace, but with the most recent patch, which at the time of recording launched yesterday, and a few other things they've implemented, they kind of shat the bed, right? <laughs> <laughs> With the latest patch, it was hilarious because I went on like the subreddit just to check how the update was going. Right. Are the new maps any good? What are the new weapons like? And everyone was just like, everything's broken, everything's right. a nightmare, everything has gone wrong because season one reloaded has essentially or at least at the in the short term, uh. broken the ability to play <laughs> Warzone. They've knackered loadouts. Uh, there's a bug in there at the time of recording where you you know drop to get your custom loadout in a game, and you just kind of get locked in this menu and you can't <laughs> choose it. Uh, people have been got people have been caught in just a menu loop where they can't even get into a game. Okay. And the new Champions Quest mode that they've introduced, which is tied to getting a nuke in Warzone, that's also been busted and temporarily removed. Awesome. But the thing is, even on top of those bugs, which may even be fixed by the time this video comes up, mm -hmm. uh, players aren't even pleased with the patch notes themselves. Everyone's kind of complaining about the changes they have made or have not made to the weapons right. and the overall meta. You know, the meta weapons and the overpowered weapons that are in there right now haven't been really touched or mm. changed to make the game feel fair and more balanced. Instead, they've actually changed weapons that people do like, like the one-shot sniper. Okay. So, a bit of background lore for you, right? In right. Warzone 1, which I know you did play, for like five minutes. For yeah. like five minutes. It was a lovely five minutes. You had the ability to one-shot snipe people. And what I mean by that is if you got a headshot with any sniper, you would either down someone if they had a self-revive mm. or you would just kill them outright. Okay. They took that away for Warzone 2 until they half introduced it with certain weapons that had massive drawbacks. And then they reintroduced it, right, with Warzone 3 with pretty much just one sniper rifle that could one-shot anyone mm. from any range but they've now nerfed that so people are kind of complaining like oh how do we how do you want snipers to work in this there because a... they're always getting changed and yeah obviously a lot of people think it's overpowered to be able to kill someone with just one shot but there's a lot of people who obviously like it and there is a lot of drawbacks to it already mm -hmm. so the point is that they've kind of nerfed the guns that in a lot of people's eyes, didn't need nerfing and not touch the ones that people are getting wrecked by <laughs> every single day. There is another mechanic that they have announced and then delayed and a couple more points, but I've talked a lot. And does this mean anything to you as yeah, someone well, who's more of a casual Call of Duty fan? Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. I try and keep up with Call of Duty. I play as much of it as I can. I, that, strangely, I didn't pick up Modern Warfare 3 because of how like mixed to incredibly negative the response to that was. Yeah. Um, so at the minute, I'm slightly out of the loop, but I try and keep up with everything. This just kind of ties into the general conversation on COD, right? now, which is like, what the hell is happening behind the scenes? Yeah. How did a, a version of the game release like this, like an upgrade for it, an update for it, um, that is so ludicrously broken where, like you said, every post on every um, you know fan forum is just, this thing is, is unacceptable, this thing's ridiculous. Um, what do you think of that in terms of like where CODs are? You play way more Warzone than me. Yeah. So it's like, was it, it was completely fine until now and it just feels like, are they just unsure of what to do in regards to how big it is? It wasn't completely fine. It was going yeah. in the right direction, but even up until this point, it's always been kind of like a running joke in the fandom that uh, these updates and these patches almost always break more than they fix, you right. know what I mean? Every single time one of these is deployed, a whole bunch of bugs pop up, you know? Never this extreme mm. to the point where it's like literally knackered the game for, for a whole day, <laughs> but it's always been the case of how can one of the biggest, if not well, no, probably not the biggest, but if one of the biggest franchises in the world with all of these developers working on it, all mm. of this money coming in, how can they not release a stable patch with every season? Like, what is going wrong behind the scenes? Mm. Like, it's raising a lot of questions because, you know, obviously there's a, there are a bunch of talented developers working on this game. Raven Software have been very um, communicative with the fan base in terms of what they want to change, what mm -hmm. they want to do. And they've been quite open and good in that regard. It's just like, yeah, you think about the amount of money going into the franchise and the quality of patches like this, and you wonder what's going on. Is something well, being rushed? Like, are they crunched for time? Are they crunched in terms of resources? Mm. Call of Duty is this massive machine, but Warzone is, is huge. It's their biggest like live service. It's where a lot of the money comes comes in, why doesn't it have that polish that mm. other games 
do? I wonder, because my long running theory with all this stuff was like, obviously Bobby Kodak has finally left, like the CEO of Activision, like that was um, finally sort of announced at the end of December, but it all kind of ties in with the idea of Microsoft acquiring Activision Blizzard. And then what would the next era of Call of Duty look like? And my thoughts on that um, were that it was going to be, Modern Warfare 3 was in such a state because Kodak wants his cash before he's done yeah. um, and push that over the finish line. And then maybe this is one of the last, you know, vestiges of that dude's influence or his era, sorry, it's not like he's involved in anything, he's too high up, but like that era of that dude at Activision, um, maybe it's just to get it over the finish line and then whatever mandates are starting to come in mm. um, from the Microsoft Xbox side, um, I wonder, I have no idea, like we have no idea how immediate that stuff was, like there, obviously there was a lot of social media conversation on a lot of employees just feeling good that Codex era was done yeah. um, and moving into it, like, you know, uh, greener pastures with Xbox, pardon the pun, because they're green, <laughs> but still, I wonder what that feels like to them and yeah. I wonder um, when those, those things come in, because obviously the Xbox Direct is on Friday and um, the Xbox themselves got out there and said there won't be any Activision stuff. We're not ready to talk about that stuff yet. So um, is that because they're getting their ducks in a row and part of that is just getting that thing launched and we'll just patch it as it's live. Like, I have no idea, but it it feels like it lines up with an yeah. overall, you know, like regime change behind the scenes. It's fascinating, man, because, you know, I don't, we well, nobody knows how or if Microsoft is going to, meddle is the wrong word, but, um, you know, be hands-on with the Call of Duty mm. franchise going forward. How much are they going to change? How much are they going to be hands-off and think, well, it's successful as it is, we'll just let it continue. But I just, and we've said this for so many years now, mm. but I don't see how the structure they have in place can continue. It's quite funny in a way because I'm currently writing a list ranking every Call of Duty game and it's actually incredible how many times I have to caveat um, every sort of entry with this game was a nightmare behind the scenes it's a miracle it was made at all because yeah. literally about half of them have had production problems stemming from dodgy decisions made by activision to change release schedules or to change allegedly something from a dlc into a full release like modern warfare 3 combined with you know chasing trends and then chucking out a bunch of um development and mm -hmm. stuff like that so yeah it makes me wonder like like I said, this is the, one of the biggest franchises in the world with so many studios working on it. Mm. What is going wrong? Surely if Microsoft comes in, they have to take a look at all of these developers. Surely those developers are absolutely <laughs> gasping to have a conversation with Microsoft and be like, look, this is what the previous regime did. Yes. It was a nightmare. Things need to change because we can't keep doing this over and over again. Yeah, and like also like that would be in regards to the next main Call of Duty, but like in theory. But yeah. like Warzone is this nice little like underpinning moneymaker thing that has been trickling along for quite a while now. And it's easy to forget there was an original version of Call of Duty um, Battle Royale. That blacks out. Blackout, blackout, yeah. And it's like that just went away because they just couldn't make it work or whatever. And yeah. then Warzone is the thing. And so to kind of mess up Warzone so severely that it's blown up at the minute, um, is like is kind of crazy it's worth doing obviously we thought it's worth doing a video like this just to signal boost the reality of what that the state of the game is yeah. um under the hope that it gets fixed hopefully by the time people see this it is actually fixed it's because it's been like a week long sort of process mm. like it's been difficult to gauge when to do a video on it because a lot of things have been changing because last week at the end of last week they also announced um with the release of season one reloaded a new mechanic called um early exfil which right. again if you're not too familiar with how Warzone works, obviously it's a battle royale, mm. it's a fight to the death, last team or last person standing wins but they were going to introduce this idea that if you got enough money you could get, you could buy a rare item called an early exfil okay. which would you spawn in a helicopter it allow you or your team to escape and win the game it wouldn't end the game like a nuke does, okay. for instance in multiplayer, but you would get like a win state of some kind and I think that we're going to be the opportunity to get five of those every match, but obviously uh, this got an immediate backlash yeah. from fans being like, well, it's a battle royale. This isn't DMZ <laughs> or an extraction <laughs> shooting, you know what I mean? That's it kind hilarious. of defeats the point if a bunch of teams can just exit on their own. Yeah but that doesn't end the game and it also doesn't count as a win. Like, what's going on? Like, this is moving in their eyes. This was what the backlash was saying, you know, uh, moving away from the tenants of 
what a Battle Royale game even is. And to be fair, for as much as I love the new version of Warzone, it's already doing that in quite a big mm. way by, you know, um, making the gameplay faster, giving you way more chances to re-enter the match. Like, there are so many ways to mm. be not just bought back, but you've obviously got the Gulag, you've got now Gulag tokens, so you get another go in the Gulag. You've got reinforcement flares that allow you to call people back in. The point is, it's like, it's people feel like it's airing closer towards multiplayer than a conventional battle royale. Yeah. And obviously trying to find that balance is, is difficult and you definitely can't please everyone. But this x film mechanic definitely got everyone kind of on the same page going, this sounds bad. So they announced that and then pretty much immediately <laughs> announced that it was <laughs> delayed and they are at least like i said you know communicative they are yeah. responding to this feedback and they have delayed it they're now going to um as far as i know deploy it in its own separate mode so they can test it see how it works and mm. stuff so it's not being destroyed completely but yeah that was just another thing to throw in where it's kind of like people are starting to question you know what are they trying to do with the game what's their vision for mm. it and is that something that the fan base wants? <laughs> it's just it, that X Phil thing is hilarious. Yeah. Like it's just like taking like a specific genre, a specific goal, and be like, what if you just buy your way through it? Yeah. Like, yeah. We're gonna have five people make a cake, but if you just buy the cake, just whatever, it's give me the end bad. state. Because um, you know, I was I've been, I played Warzone since the start. I was there for Warzone 2.0, which mm -hmm. made a lot of changes that people didn't like. But even I managed to kind of like power through those and still have fun. This was the first time I've ever gone, that might stop me from playing. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. it's obviously, you know, I needed to see it in practice first, but just seeing that on paper, I kind of thought this is getting so far away from the core formula that I love mm. that um, I was kind of, for the first time, really worried because even when Warzone 2 came out, I kind of thought, well, I can see what they're going for. It's more traditionally a battle royale now, and I'm sure some of these things will change, which they did. But this, I was, yeah, it was the first time I, I didn't panic, but I thought <laughs> the question marks and the were going up and the red flags were definitely raised.